Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body and keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line, your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound and while you focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take a few minutes for ourselves to understand how this meditation will help for us to develop our day-to-day -day life and at the same time how it can become a foundation for our spiritual life. Because the clarity you develop in you will help you to bring the energy and put it to practice. If you don't have that inner clarity regarding what you practice, so by the time you get tired, or may you get disappointed and then you will give up. So that's why it is important for yourself. And at the same time, you have to remember we are not here for forever. We are here only for a very short time period. So it's a kind of like we just seen a motel. We are in a kind of like a guest house. We have to leave by the time. So before you leave, it is your responsibility to get the best and uplift yourself and develop the growth towards profitable way. It, it, that doesn't mean overnight you have to hit the, the highest. So once you develop the process step by step, then the journey itself, you can enjoy, you can be happy because you know wherever you are, you know how to get the best out of that situation and become more better. So you have to have the growth, development in you rather than depending from the outside situations Always look into yourself and see out of any situation, are you become more better? So in that way, in any in, in situation, you are capable to, to develop your inner clarity. So keep it as attitude. Why it is very necessary? So when it comes to dharma or when it comes to spiritual practice, once we attaining to liberation, there is, it's called awake. So to the Buddha we say, awaken one, awake. So this awaken one means 
that means we are in a kind of like a sleep mood. So in, before go into that spiritual awaken, in this very conventional life, learn to awake. So what that mean? So it's like this. Sometimes we say, oh, time goes so fast. Oh, look this year. It's already four months already gone. Oh, look, you know, we get old. We don't know what happened to us. So you win through the life. You got old. But you don't know you lived that life. So that's mean what? You sleep. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? You sleep walking through life. And maybe you have husband, wife, children, friends and family members. As monks, we have temples, devotees, and many other things around us. And but still sometimes, oh, I don't know what happened to our life. So that's mean what? That what you had, you didn't recognize. So that's mean you are in sleep mood. So before you awake in the spiritual realm or the, in the spiritual spectrum, remember to awake in this conventional life. So how you can do it? Observe and see how you are doing. Just imagine, just look your body. Is it overweight? Is it getting sick? Are you, are you maintaining your health properly? L look your eating habit. And then you will look your sleeping habit. Look how that the, the input, the information that what the kind of information you gain. Look into that. Tap into that and see what is happening in you? What are you keep doing? And health-wise, look into yourself. So the physically, same, and the mentally. Look what kind of thoughts you have. So that kind of like a giver, awakened sign to yourself. And then the socially, what kind of people you associate? So th that's important. And look that what kind of things you buy, what kind of things for your money and how your financial situation, how you spend. So, and at the same time, how your spiritual investment, for what kind of things you invest spiritually, how you interfere with the spiritual practice, and look how your social behavior so that's kind of like giving a vacant mood to yourself. You recognize you. Because in this journey, listen this very carefully and be with me. In this journey, we all are. No one is better than anyone. We all are in a certain ways recovering and at the same time we discovering. So the recovery and discovery, this both happens through us. Through the samsaric journey, we all went through many up and downs in our life. And forget about that, the beyond the, uh, the birth. After even the, from the mother's womb to today, if we look, we all are went through very difficult, hard times, sometimes. We, we never had, we all, we never had a kind of like a 
very luxurious way of life. It's not going to happen. It happened in movies, stories, dramas. It happens like that. But in real life, we all go through up and downs. So that that we so far we went through and we have we all have some more deeper pain inside us. So we all try to kind of like recover from that. So the dharma practicing dharma, the spiritual path give you opportunity for you to recover. So we all need that. And at the same time we are discovering something because we no need to repeat that whatever we done in the past. So we have to discover something. So discover doesn't mean you bringing something from outside to put it to you. So the cover, so the, it, it, the discover, that's mean you remove the cover. So that means it is there with you. So be with me. It is going to be become very interesting that it is already there with you and you can't find something. So that's why the discovery doesn't mean you go somewhere and you find something. No. It happened. That word became more popular because sometimes when I go to schools, I ask from children that what is that mean? So some, because, because of this TV channel, Discovery. They go to place, to place, place, to place, and and they find something, and it's kind of like you people think you go somewhere and find something. No, it is already there. Maybe we didn't see it. So you remove the cover, and then you receive it. So same thing in your life also. We all are need that discovery. It's within us. So that's why for that, don't chase for anything. Don't go behind for anything. Chasing something is, is not going to, to bring anything to us. It's just the, the kind of like a, the the journey itself make us more kind of like a, the struggle. Rather than chasing with things, remember it's already there, try to cooperate with it. So whatever you have. So that is the, the different with the, the discovery. So the discovery means the, the way to remove the cover is rather than go and chasing something, you start to cooperate with whatever the situation or the, the people or the things that you have. Then you will see, it is there already that what you look for happiness or the satisfaction or the, the, or the, the growth or the development. So, it's, a, it's not a kind of, it, it takes time. It's a kind of like a deeper wisdom that you have to develop in you little by little. You have to have some kind of mental attitude to get into that. It's like a breaking a coconut. You know, because the breaking coconut in our country, it's a skill. You know, breaking coconut is a skill. And you'll observe it. And there is a one place. And if you find that place and hit to that place, exactly you can get a clear cut. The people who break the coconuts, they know that. <laughs> huh? And for some people, breaking a coconut is a kind of like a huge victory. But then it is. It, it, not only the coconut, even in the martial art, you know, this breaking things, it's, it's a skill. It doesn't matter, you have power. 
there is a certain angle that you have to move your hands and the hip and all the joints and you have to place that to the right place. Otherwise, you get hit. So this is a skill. So when it comes to discovery, when you cooperate what happens, you recognize this angle to break the things and go through. So otherwise, maybe you keep hitting, hitting, you know, struggling, but it may not going to happen. It's a, it's a one place. You have to find out. So that's why practicing will give that opportunity, that one thing to recognize. You don't need to understand million things in the world. So it, it, it's like this. Try, try to be with me and understand. So one drop of water and the ocean of ocean billion trillions we can't count how 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 much the water there one drop of water the same properties carry the entire ocean so just imagine if you are capable to Understand that one drop of water, you are capable to understand the nature of the entire ocean. That one spark of the fire, the same property that in, in the entire world, that all the wildfires, that all the great fires happen and happening. That spark, one spark, that whatever the property carry, if you are capable to understand that, you are capable to understand the nature of that all the great fire happen in the human history. London, Chicago, Rome, so kind of like that. So then are you have that discipline to get into that one thing because our mind always like to get more, 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 more. So that's the conventional mind. So tranquility mind means you settle down with the one thing. And it calls sitting. And you sitting and bring that the busy awareness to one point. You be with it. Allow everything to settle down. So that method used to be before the Buddha also. Just settling down, remember, not going to end things. For the, for the moment, it's okay. Sometimes when situations come, arguments come, you know, we settle down. But that doesn't mean the, the problem meant. No. It, it keeps happening. It's growing inside. So like that, Settling down and having tranquility state doesn't mean you come to the complete liberation. So that's why the vipassana method you have to practice. So what is really vipassana means? That means rather than settling down, you are thoroughly, deeply Observe the moment of experience. That's mean your reality. That's mean in the moment what you experience. Is there anything permanent in that? And is there anything bring the complete 
unchangeable satisfaction or is there anything related to permanent I am? And so when you observe deeply, you what you can recognize, you recognize that whatever that the moment of experience come out of another thing. So that is where you are capable to see the causation. There is nothing exists in this world itself permanent, permanently or independently. So any experience come to us as a result of many things. So if you are capable to understand that simple truth, that it's kind of like you are recognizing and understanding that the property of that one drop of water. So that, that is what the discipline you have to build. So rather than chasing towards something, so if you are capable to cooperate, so then what you need to cooperate in the, when, the, when it comes to the Vipassana level? In the moment of the experience that happening with your perception, and with your body, with your feelings, with your mind, and the very pro entire process of the body. You can go one by one. There is no orders, there is no such order, but whatever comes to your mind or whatever you go through, whatever the experience happens, and you observe it deeply, deeply, rather than holding it to it, you observe that. So once you recognize this everything part of something and you are part of everything that your egocentric self-centered mind slowly drop. Remember this. This part, this what you experience is part of something and you are part of everything. And once you have that, you're not going to draw a line. This is mine, even the body. Because you know, without this food, or the water, or the air, this body can't be like this. And so once you have that simple wisdom in you, and little by little you can expand it too. Because that's the simple truth happen in this everything. So it's like you are tapping to the, the spark of that fire. So have a discipline to be with one thing, not for all the time, but for the moment. Have discipline. Whatever that in that very moment, be with it. Keep that discipline with you. And when it get when when you are into that, cooperate with it in every angle, not only one way, the way you think. From every angle. So uh, rather than go behind something, when you cooperate with it, it gives an ability for you to, to go into that. So remember, go behind something and go into something two different way of method. So then when the perception comes, as a perceiver, you can go behind what you perceive or you can go into what you perceive. It's two different things. So go behind what you perceive. That means go behind the perception is the samsara. Go into perception is nibbana. 
also work. And when you go into that, it's not the holding to your point of view, you are thoroughly, deeply discovering it. observing and recognizing, analyzing from every angle. So it once it comes to that, there, there are a few things that the one is that uh, learning, communication, observation. So when you bind that three things together, so ability of cooperating becomes stronger. So this is part of that. So learning, communicating, and the observation. So develop in any, any part, when you want to cooperate, you have to develop that three angles. So that's why little by little every day, we develop that path. And once you have that, your mind becomes sharp and clear for you. And then you are the one who build up the trust within yourself. So once you start to practice, it gives the benefit to yourself to, to become more clear. And even in the conventional life, that whatever the, the things that you do with the outside world, you're going to become more com comfortable with your own actions. Otherwise, what will happen? This is the thing. Nothing wrong that you, and everybody no need to practice this or everybody no need to practice meditation. Or like, but this is the thing. Last but not least, don't run the race with the horse have a bad habit. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's, it is very dangerous. That's why when they run the horse for the, the race, they train it very well. And it doesn't get disturbed and it doesn't have any favor or desire to even look here and there. You know, they, they cover the eyes and give the focus. And even not hitting or beating is kind of like a, just the kick. The kick that the host know, you know, how to get the speed. You know. And so then yourself, you have to look into yourself how you get the kick <laughs> from from where are you are you are you get the kick out of the awareness are you get the kick out of your feelings so if you get the kick out of feelings desires so remember you train the horse in the wrong way but if you get the kick out of the the awareness observation, recognition, you going to win the race. It may not going to happen overnight, but keep running. Keep running. You going to win the game. So that's how from the ancient time, all the enlightened masters you know, they, they used to, to go through this life and get the hit to the right place to break the 
the the pattern of this and go through the life and attain the the discovery or the liberation so you are capable you can do that you can do that it's just not doing a lot of things but whatever the things you do you have to give your best for that and you have to trust it and of course it cannot be unprofitable things but even still if your mind trained to that quality to observe and recognize even the action is unprofitable by the time you going to end up being liberate that's how like uh, angulimala he into killing people but he had the ability to to kind of like think deeply not just go with the pace value and he was keep running chasing behind the buddha to to cut his fingers and he couldn't reach to him then the and he said stop stop and the buddha said i already stop it's your time to stop and he he start to think he's the buddha he never tell lies he never joke you know he never tell anything kind of like a meaningless what is that mean and right away it he went to the depth of it see that's the ability rather than go behind something when you learn the ability to go into something even you are doing something wrong you hit the right point one time only thing is you have to develop that right attitude in you because when it come to the mind it work with the dharma it work with the 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 principles governed by the nature it's not work according to the way you do believe no so that is the beauty of dharma when you tune to the right mechanism of the mind you will get out of any situation so it is your responsibility then little by little and develop it in you harness it grow grow let the let the growth happen in you so out of that growth you need to to experience and fulfillment because when it come to trees just having tree leaves or the branches doesn't work just having flowers is not enough it need the fruit also so then yourself see how you grow and what you share with others is there any fruits can you share when other people take it they get sick or oh, they get healthy and nourish so let, with that let's practice a little bit so keep your right palm on your left and neck it straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture so bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say so patweva oh may i be well and happy three times take a moment and think we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique all the buddhas all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom so we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting may my body become more comfortable 
May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So don't allow your mind to go here and there. Just allow it to settle down with the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times. Find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen naturally itself. And when it happens through the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light to entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe, also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so pray low strong, tall or short, Big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward, visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Sí, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of guardian angels and deities will receive that merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. And also by the power of these meritorious activities, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Ittavata cha mehi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numudam tu sabbe sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numudam tu sabbe sampati siddhya sabbe satta numudam tu sabbe sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati pati a buddham puje mi dhammang puje mi sangang puje mi Addaya imaya pati pati a jati jaravya dimaranam ha pari bunje sami Idam me punya kam manga savakaya vahang ho tu sabadukka pamunjatu Bless you.